Since the early 2000s, when Israel Finkelstein's low chronology of Iron Age Palestine became a serious threat to the idea that Solomon was a great builder king, several archaeologists, usually of medium to low repute, have suggested linking places they are excavating with the biblical united monarchy, said in the Bible to have been ruled by the early to mid 10th century BC Jerusalemite kings David and Solomon. The first of such archaeologists, as I shall call them, we must deal with, is Josef Garfinkel, the excavator of Kirbet Kweafa, a very interesting site located on the ridge directly to the north of the Valley of Elah. The site was inhabited sparsely during the Middle Bronze, as a walled fortress in the late Iron Age I, as a possible administrative settlement during the late Persian and earlier Ptolemaic periods, as a farm from the later Ptolemaic to the Byzantine periods, as a caravansary during the Byzantine period, and as a farm again during the early Islamic period, and finally, as a farm once more during the 19th century and early 1940s. It is the period of the walled late Iron I fortress that we must focus on here. Garfinkel claims, Various suggestions that completely deny the biblical tradition regarding King David and argue that he was a mythological figure, or just the leader of a small tribe, are now shown to be wrong. By the fact that this fortress, shown by radiocarbon dating to have been inhabited in the late 11th and early 10th centuries BC, was found in what would later be the Kingdom of Judah. His statement, as we shall see below, is baseless. Firstly, we must deal with issues of pottery chronology. Garfinkel has repeatedly claimed that, as the site clearly dates to the late 11th or early 10th century, and dates to the early Iron Age 2a, it effectively refutes the low chronology of Iron Age Palestine. However, Kirbet Kweafa, as shown by Lily Singerabitz, is a late Iron One, not early Iron 2a fortress. The clearest proof of this is the fact that a combination of red slip and hand burnish, which is found on at least a fifth of Iron 2a assemblages everywhere in Palestine except for, perhaps, Phoenicia, is found on less than one-tenth of one percent of the sherds found at Kweafa. Secondly, we must deal with issues of ethnicity. It is clear that Kweafa was not a Philistine site. Apart from the finding of some of what the excavators call Middle Philistine Decorated, or Early Ashdod ware, shown by petrographic analysis to be imported, there is a complete absence of any kind of Philistine pottery at Kweafa. Thus, some have proposed that the site is of Israelite ethnicity, using the language of the Kweafa inscription found near the western gate of the site as backing for this idea. However, the Kweafa inscription does not have any features that would allow its language to be pinned down as specifically Hebrew, as shown by epigrapher Chris Rolston. More seriously, collar-rimmed pithoi, the hallmark of Iron Age I Israelite pottery, have not been found at Kweafa at all. Indeed, according to Lily Singeravitz, the pottery assemblage of Kweafa is most similar to the pottery assemblage of nearby Bet Shemesh rather than the region of Benjamin to the east. Bet Shemesh was probably not Israelite, as its houses are not of the typical and almost exclusively Israelite four-room house plan. Thirdly, while there was excavated evidence of a southern gate, it was so altered by Perso-Ptolemaic building activity as to render any attempted reconstruction of the gate baseless at best. The reconstruction of the southern gate went far beyond what could be interpreted from the actual building remains found in the southern gate area. While it was most likely a southern gate was at Kweafa, those with an interest in the site should note that the structure people see today was reconstructed, not excavated. Garfinkel has also identified Kweafa with the biblical settlement of Sharain, or Gates. As Kirbet Kweafa is not situated on a road, like Sharaim is said to be, and was not inhabited in the late 7th century BC, when Joshua and Samuel were first composed, it seems likely Sharaim is still best identified as either Kirbet Es Shaira or Kirbet Es Shejera. So, 
what is left of Kitabit Kweapa. An early 10th century BC late Iron One fortress built to defend the eastern Ela Valley from Ghat. A replacement for the mighty hill town of Azeka, which was ruined in Iron One. It may have possibly been built by a lowland polity centered at Sokho or elsewhere, such as Adulam, as made likely by the south southeast pointing second gate. It may have been built, as Israel Finkelstein suggests, by a highland polity centered at Gibeon, probably to be identified with the polity associated with the biblical Saul. I suggest that the fortress, and all its thumbprint impressed jar handles, swords, and fortifications were the result of a local lowland polity, possibly centered at Sokol. The question now comes to Yosef Garfinkel's motives for his sensationalism. He has stated publicly that he does not necessarily believe the biblical stories relating to the Ela Valley and the late Iron Age I are historical. He also appears to accept there is little evidence of a strong centralized 10th century BC authority in northern Palestine. Thus, his motives are not similar to Eilat Mazar's, or any other religious fundamentalists. His motive appears to be twofold. Firstly, to revive the importance of David and the likelihood of the existence of a pre-9th century BC state in Judah, and, secondly, to raise the ire of Israel Finkelstein, who has worked tirelessly for over 15 years to defend his low chronology of Iron Age Palestine, succeeding in the conversion of the plurality of relevant Israeli scholars in regards to this issue. Thank you for watching.